Hello, hello, happy Saturday. This is Actors Daily Bread, episode 76. Ah, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, but I wanted to take a, just a few moments just to pop on. Make sure my phone is on silent. I wanted to take a few minutes just to pop on this Saturday. Um, typically when I pop up on Saturdays, I'm usually talking about things that I'm reading and just some personal development stuff. So today I want to talk about your value, and I'm going to make this kind of quick. Um, but if this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, welcome. My name is Christine Horn. I am a professional working actress of over 20 plus years, and I'm a life and career coach for actors. So this is a place to find acting tips, audition tips, and life coaching tips. Straight no chaser, <laughs> right? And to all my... Uh, Replay watchers who I adore, what's up? Replay watchers. <laughs> Be sure to leave a comment, let me know where you're watching from, and if you have a question or a comment, please leave it below. I respond to every single comment. But just what I wanted to share with you today was a quote that I read. Um, I'm always reading different types of books, as you guys know. Um, but this one quote, sometimes things, I have a tendency, I'll say things hit me in the neck. I'm like, that, oh, that hit me in the neck. Like just when it's that good and that juicy. And it's, what is, I don't want to mis misquote it. If you put a small value on yourself, rest assured the world will not raise the price. I'm going to say that again. If you put a small value on yourself, rest assured the world will not raise the price. Y'all, when I read that, I was like, yes. That is so true, and it made me think about how it connects to our to our careers. You know, we all have stepping stones. We're all in different areas and different levels of our career. So you might be in a place where you just need to take any gig, right? You may just you may be in the the new sp the new space, right? You may be doing anything that's free: student films, indie films, community theater, just um, YouTube videos, anything to get your feet wet and to just get out there, right? But then you go to a next tier where maybe you don't need to do that anymore. Maybe you're gonna, maybe you move on to doing extra work, right? And then you do extra work, and then you actually then you get a, a some start speaking, get some speaking lines, right? Or you're not an understudy anymore. You get to be an actual character, a lead character in a play. But each tier you go up naturally the other tiers will fall away. And here's why they have to. Because we train people how to treat us. You know, I'm sure you know that. So we also train the industry how to treat us. We train casting directors how to see us, right? So if you are coming in at only, if you're only doing extra work and you stay doing extra work for two years, three years, when you say you actually want to do speaking roles and be a star of a show, be a series regular or a major co-star, right? Hi, Tanika. Thank you for watching, right? If that's what you say, but you only keep doing extra roles or you only keep doing a certain thing, that's where people are going to see you. That's the value that you're showing us. That's where you are. So you, there's going to be times where you have to say no. You know, thank you so much for calling me for that extra gig, but I've started taking speaking gigs only. Right. I've now that I got my first co-star, I don't want to go backwards. Think about it. Even if you have if you work a nine to five while you're pursuing this career, you know, it's like sometimes we get frustrated. Like, why don't why won't they pay me more? You know, I'm overworked and underpaid and, you know, I wish they would give me more. I, I'm worth more. But sometimes we have to show people what our value is. We have to show it by showing it to ourselves. That may mean that may mean you that may mean you quit easy what you think you should be making for that job that you're doing. And I say this too because I have been in a position where there's some great cast and directors who are also friends or just people who I've worked with over the years, and they may have put me in a box, or they may not have realized that I have decided that I am working at this level now. And so I'm unable to accept those other positions, those other jobs, those other um, roles. And I'm so grateful that they call me. But I have to keep raising the bar, keep raising the bar, keep raising the bar. So as you look at your career and as, look at, as you look at where you're going and what your path is, because your path is not like my path or like his path or her path, right? You have to look at, okay, I'm here. Where are you today? I guess ask yourself that question. Where are you today? And where do you see yourself? And what dues do you need to pay so that you can get to the next level? 
So like I, before I ever booked a television show, I used to be an, I used to do extra stuff. After being on Broadway and everything, I would do, when I moved to, first moved to LA back in 2011, and I didn't have any TV credits, and I couldn't get an agent who would send me out, I would just do extra work so I could, as again, I'm gonna quote her again, Lisa Arundel Anderson, the fabulous actress. She says, be ready so that you don't have to get ready. So since I hadn't booked a television show yet or had an audition for one, what better way to learn how TV works than to find a way to get on a TV set, right? When I first moved to LA, I was doing background work on The Young and the Restless. I was like, hey, I don't know how soaps work. Oh, nah, I don't know how soap operas work. So I'm gonna do extra work on a soap opera. And I was so glad I did, because can you imagine getting booked on something and you have no idea how the pace of that show goes? You know what I mean? Like, especially soap operas, oh my gosh. it's They do one rehearsal, one shot, and they move on. <laughs> they move on. And you'll see like the actors on the soaps, you know, in between, you know, maybe they'll do a second take, maybe. For the most part, part it's like one take and done they rehearse they're like reading their scripts because mind you they get a new script every day so if you don't if you're not good at memorization this is when you start getting ready right and they'll be reading 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 they're like action they'll be like so John <laughs> but that if I hadn't done some work on the young and the restless I would have never known that and so I ended up doing young and the restless several times to the point where I became very featured and uh so that was fun. But so that's my point. Just know your value. And if you're not unclear of your value or where you are, start figuring out what it is that you want out of this career, your stepping stone, where you're going next. And you have to be careful about teetering back and forth. Right? So if you've only done a certain type of thing and you're tired of doing that thing, stop doing that thing. There are other opportunities that will come. You have to start thinking from your abundant mindset that there's more on the way, but you have to be very clear to God, to the universe, to whatever you want to call it, about your intention. So if you're only doing indie films, if you're only doing web series that don't pay you and the quality is bad, and why are you doing it? Because you're not going to be able to use the, the footage anyway if it sucks. So let's how, how about we step it up? And that might mean it's quiet for a little while while you get some of those gigs, but it's like quality over quantity. I hope that makes sense. And if you have a question, if this is like we're saying, I don't know what you're talking about, leave a comment below. But that quote today, if you put a small value on yourself, rest assured the world will not raise its price. If you only accept co-stars forever and ever and ever, you're going to stay co-star. People ask me, oh, so many people asked me before I left uh, Atlanta, Georgia, um, when, my, when me and my husband decided to move here in February back to LA, I mean, even when I got to LA, people were like, you left Atlanta? There's so much work in Atlanta. There, are, isn't there a lot of film and TV in Atlanta? I'm like, yes, there's tons. You could stay really busy as an actor in Atlanta. But I want to be the star of the show. And what I know for sure is that they booked the stars out of LA or New York. So I'm going to go where I can be the star. And I'm grateful for everything that Atlanta offered me. And I still work out of Atlanta. But you see what I mean? I had to set my value. And let me tell you, I can't share everything with you now, but I can tell you that it was, a, it was an amazing choice. It was an amazing choice, right? So I'm just gonna leave you with that. I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful weekend. And uh, I hope that was food for your soul. And I hope it gives you something to think about. But sometimes those choices are hard. It's hard to say no when you just wanna gig, when you just wanna work. But I have found in my career over all these years is that I had to start telling people, thanks, I'll pass. Thank you so much for calling me in. Thank you so much for considering me for that role. But those, you know, that one line I'm going to pass on because I've, I've already been a series regular and a guest star and recurring guest star and recurring co-star. So I'm going to pass on that. And that one line will be awesome for um, a newer actor who needs that credit. But thank you so much. Right. I don't tell them all that. That's my internal. That's my internal monologue. <laughs> all I say is thank you so much. Unavailable. <laughs> you got to know what you say to yourself and what you say to people. Know the difference. All right, let me go before I keep rambling. Have a great Saturday and um, 
I will see you, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. Bye.